I bait the hook, I always deliver. Only one thing always on my list. Wake up and hunt that money, fish. Put your boat in, call your friends. It's about that time to go fishing again. We on the hunt for that money, fish. When we set that hook, we don't ever miss. One day this day. Cast a bandit, deep sea demon, the fish can't stand it. Know that I'm coming, saltwater chumming, large mouth legend. Show up and catch him. There's only one thing I was on my list. Wake up and hunt that money fish. Put your boat in, call your friends. It's about that time to go fishing again. Oh, I'm about to get him right here. Gonna take that thing. It's that money fish. We on the hunt for that money fish. When we set that hook, we don't ever one day this game is gonna make us rich, y'all. Climb on board, let's up that money fish. Money fish. <laughs> Last week on Money Fish. We're coming up on on lines out. We've got about 15 minutes. We get a bite. And it's not really unlike any, you know, decent sized yellowfin bite. Drag's peeling off. Josh grabs the rod. We started getting him in. Ben was coming down. People were scrambling. And ah, the fish came off. So after the Ocean City tournament, we had a show. Uh, it was our debut as a company to the industry, the fishing industry. They've been driving all night to make sure that that boat, our booth, and all of our merchandise gets there so we can show up strong. Pulling in there at the last minute, getting it on the floor, sign a relief, and then, um, hey, let's see what these samples look like, because a lot of them we opened for the first time on that floor in that booth at ICAST. The team heads south to launch at ICAST. ICAST is, is something that was always very important to us. We had to show up front and center of that industry and, and show up as big as we possibly could. It was, it was something that, you know, in our past lives, we, we couldn't do. Um, you know, now we have a fishing brand, two of them, that we're going to bring to market and ICAST. There, there couldn't be a better platform to us, for us to launch that, to see our customers, to see people in the industry, and to show off our pro staff and, and our internal team. Uh, it was something that we picked out from the start, like this is our brand launch. Going into ICAST, there's, you know, we were in this ninja mode leading up to the launch of the brand where there were some whispers out in the industry that you know, there's this new company, um, it's an apparel-based company, and, and they're working with Spanish Fly, and they have their own brand, but uh, really hazy to everybody. Um, and this was our coming out party, and, and we had to be special. Throughout the summer, we built uh, a booth in Ben Verner's driveway. Um, and, and Ben and Bobby Later were really the masterminds behind this. They did absolutely everything. I think Josh and I were there for more of moral support. Um, and it was, it was incredible. You know, by day two, this booth was completely set up. It's a transformer. It, the floor drops, the back goes up, and they just keep stacking in, and the floor goes in, and all of a sudden you have what is almost a cabin here on the showroom floor after a, you know, an 18 hour pull from Ocean City to Orlando. So we made ICAST very hard on ourselves. Um, so, you know, leading into it with the tournament, caravanning down there on our own, not paying a company to, to take our booth down, set it up, um, you know, a booth that we built in my driveway. I mean, we did it old school. Um, it just led to a lot of things that could have went wrong, right? We didn't even know how the booth was going to travel down the road. For all we know, we could have got there and opened the doors and it was in pieces. I mean, it was a, a wood and rusty tin booth that was very authentic. And then, you know, it turned out it was very durable, but you know, we didn't know that at the time. There, there's a lot of stress at this time. You're, you're coming into the market with a brand new line. People know who you are, but they don't know what you can do. And not knowing what that reception is going to be is, it's nerve wracking.
you know, this is our chance to show up in the industry. Let's get this booth 100% set up and not just set up. Let's merchandise it, signage, lighting. We're gonna leave the lights on because I want everybody that comes in that door the next day, the first day, probably the first entrance in here to see a 34 foot boat out the front that everybody knows and loves. And I want them to see this booth done, videos running, all its glory. Like this is how we showed up. This is performance from the first fish to the last. Shimano's SWX concept, power, rigidity, toughness, drag performance, and water resistance. Absolute power right here, baby. To give you retrieving power, strength, and durability. There he is. X-Ship, cranking power. On the Stella. X-Shield, extreme water resistance <laughs> in the harshest yeah! conditions. X-Tough Drag, ultimate smoothness and power to move big fish. The all-new Stella, show your power. Sing to me, Stella. There's a lot of ways, I think, to catch a memory. One is with a rod and reel. There he is. In the course of a fishing day, there's so many things that happen that have nothing to do with holding a fish up that are absolutely so cool. I really enjoy that kind of stuff, and it has nothing to do with having a fish in your hands and holding a fish. Spanish Fly Apparel, keeping the legend alive. Find us at SpanishFlyStore.com. That's why we do this, man. The team gets ready for iCast to begin. The two days to prep the booth, you know, you're really getting dialed in with your team. You're communicating your story. Um, everybody in their niche is communicating together so the full story can be told the right way. Um, and it's amazing to see a group come together with incredible strengths in different fields and allow that group to become one entity. And that showed at ICAST. The, the first day at the show was, you know, it's like the first day of high school. Day one, um, we get in there and you know we're kind of trugging along like we we see some people we know we're not all that crowded um you know it's just one of those things first first trade show and you start to get a little nervous but we had some important meetings coming and later that day we had um you know a nice event that was going to happen but as the day wore on as people gravitated from the hard goods section they're checking out the new reels the new waders the new rods and all the gadgets there was kind of this little tornado buzz that was going around the room about, man, did you hear about those guys? I would say the first three or four hours, it's a little slow. You know, we're off to the side, the big guys that are Yeti, GoPro, you know, these companies that have inherently been some of the biggest, best companies in the industry. By about noon, there was a buzz. As the day wore on, that little groundswell spun around the building and came back and we were absolutely stuffed, jam-packed the rest of the time. And it wasn't just people that wanted to see product. It was friends of friends. You know, people just coming by to give us a high five. It really shows that, you know, this is not just something that's gonna flash by. The best guys in the industry believe in it. So maybe it's worth taking a look at. And our press release is launched uh, the week prior and then announcing some of the big names, you know, that day created this buzz that, you know, people wanted to come see what this brand was, who are these guys, you know, they really didn't know who we were, or what we did. Um, and by 3 p.m. that afternoon, the booth was slammed from vendors to accounts, uh, to other professional fishermen, to uh, magazine companies. So it, it really was this shock and awe campaign of there's two new brands they're coming hot and heavy and it really wasn't until we could get the product into people's hands that they started feeling the emotion and and believing in what's going on one person put it to me 
y'all as a brand came in like ninjas. Um, and really, the introduction to the business was not known at the time. And uh, so people were excited about it. They, they thought, you know, for a long time, the fishing industry hasn't really had a brand or something that they could stand on or be a part of. And they saw the energy, they saw the product and how you know, creative and the fabrics were and uh, got excited about it. So every day at the booth, we just had tons of people coming in, socializing, talking to us about the product and just getting a lot of excitement behind the brand. Uh, later in the day, after our announcements of, of Kevin and Skeet and Gerald and Dave and Mark Davis, um, we had what we called um, and we'll do it again this year and it's something we're always gonna do. It's, it's the family picture. So we have all of our internal team, any of the support staff, and then the pro staff. And it was at three o'clock and the industry responded and we're up there and it just, you know, it was just like the playbook. And I keep saying it, but you're looking out and you're seeing familiar faces, maybe people you worked with in years past or people you've seen on television. You know, I've never met this guy, but he's famous. Um, he came just to see this event where these guys came, they stood up on our little mini stage with us. And, you know, that was just a, a community of support and it worked. I mean, we, we stuffed the booth, um, we had a little happy hour and people responded. And the next day and the next day, and it just went on and on and built and built. And uh, it went perfectly. There was four days like this where it was non-stop every day. No water breaks, no lunch breaks. It was 24-7 meeting with everybody in the industry. And, and this was a culmination of months and months of groundwork from designs to sourcing to, to bringing product in. So one of the most important things that happens at ICAST is just industry relationships. It's face to face. It's, you know, it's, you know, having a, a in-person meeting with the president of Shimano. Not many people can do that. Um, I'm fortunate to, you know, have a relationship through Jose and, you know, we have meetings with people like that and it's not necessarily anything that comes out of it. It's not so you can name drop, but it's things like that that can spawn into you know another relationship and maybe it's a new product line in the future or maybe now we're fishing with their stuff on our boat and it just kind of that stuff happens all day all the time whether it's in your booth or in the line at the cafeteria i mean it's it's that important for this industry and you know you're meeting with new prospective pro staff you're meeting with partners you're meeting with people that want to represent your company around the country and um, you know that for us coming out of the gate was was so important, and it just went really well. Um, you know we're showing product to buyers at the at the giant big box stores, um, and and showing them how our brand showed up. And we had meetings with them prior. Hey, we're gonna do this. Look at this great product. This is our marketing plan. And until you show up at iCast and prove it, it's kind of like yeah yeah yeah. But um, man, after that, everyone was a believer. And, you know, here we are. This is performance, from the first fish to the last. Introducing Threadlock from Seaguar, an unprecedented new super braid. It's an ultra strong 16 strand hollow core with unmatched abrasion resistance. And the future of braid doesn't stop there. Featuring our exclusive eight strand microweave technology, all new SmackDown Tournament Braid is perfectly round and ultra thin for pinpoint casts. Only from Seaguar, the world leader, trusted by anglers the world over. There's a lot of ways, I think, to catch a memory. One is with a rod and reel. There he is. In the course of a fishing day, there's so many things that happen that have nothing to do with holding a fish up that are absolutely so cool. I really enjoy that kind of stuff and it has nothing to do with having a fish in your hands and holding a fish. Spanish fly apparel, keeping the legend alive. 
Find us at SpanishFlyStore.com. That's why we do this, man. So one of the things that, that we identified as an opportunity in the, in the fishing industry was really to go after top tier pro staff. I mean, it wasn't something that was being done very often by any of the apparel companies. I mean, it's, it's hard when you're doing a couple hundred million dollars to justify signing somebody that you may or may not get a lift from. But for us as a brand, we couldn't have done anything better. I mean, to have Kevin on board and to have him buy in and believe in us and believe in the product and, and understand that it was better and it was going to be special. And, and then to parlay that into really pulling in the rest of the team. It's one of those things like if Kevin's in, okay, now I'm listening and I'm paying attention. And then Skeet and then Gerald and Mark, um, Dave Marciano, and then the hard merchandise team. I mean, all that stuff came together specifically because we identified an opportunity to have top tier talent represent a new brand and hopefully give us some authenticity and make us legit in the space just by having them associated based on their experience, what they've seen and what they've seen in us. So Kevin Van Dam, one of the best fishermen in the world and of all time. I mean, he's Tiger Woods of fishing, Michael Jordan of fishing. He's won it all and he's won it all several times. Um, you know, one of the guys that really moves the needle in the industry just by having his name attached. Skeet Reese gives us uh, a West Coast presence. Uh, he's got a great attitude. Uh, we love his energy. He's got great relationships in the industry. He's won a lot and he's one of the top tier guys on the bass side. Daryl Swindle is, is one of the most loved anglers in the industry. I absolutely, um, you know, fell in love with his approach to engaging the fans and supporting his sponsors when he just fell on his face at the Bassmaster Classic in Lakes Gunnersville, which everyone picked him to win, and he damn near zeroed in the event. And he just took it like a champ um, and turned it into such a positive and really built his brand and the brands around him, and it was somebody immediately who we wanted to be identified with. Mark Davis has, has one of the best produced shows on television. They really go the extra mile, getting the shots that nobody else gets, investing in production, traveling, very similar to the way Jose used to do it, and they're one of the few shows that do, uh, to make sure that he's showing the viewers something special, and he's fishing in some pretty raw elements. Um, Mark's past experience with skin cancer also gives us a platform to speak to our anglers about the importance of wearing long sleeve polyester, protecting yourself from the sun, and really being cautious about that. I mean, a lifetime of fishing can turn into a nightmare really quick if you're not careful. Dave Marciano, I mean, Wicked Tuna is one of the most popular shows on television, period. Forget about the most popular fishing show. I think it's a runaway. Um, and Dave and Jay are just some people I met along the way. They were just super real. I mean, and Dave is just, you know, he'll look at you and say, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I'm just a fisherman. This is great. And, you know, immediately gravitated towards those guys. Um, knew they weren't going to stand and represent something that they didn't believe in or understand. And I think the way that they go about it and their background is something that the fans really gravitate towards and it's something we wanted our brand identified with. torture our lights so you can rely on them in the real world. Rigid Industries has created the world's toughest LED lights, now available for your boat.
Start seeing the difference. Rigid Industries. The team heads to Greenville, South Carolina for the 2015 Bassmaster Classic. So now, you know, almost a year ago, uh, we identified the Bassmaster Classic as, you know, just calendar wise, it was going to be our first consumer event. We were lucky we'd have product in stores, but we knew we were going to sell here and it was something that, you know, it was going to be our first consumer facing deal. And uh, based on the reception we had throughout the year, we knew we'd have a lot of buzz going. Obviously, we, we put the marketing plan in place. We were poised to be successful, but was it just going to be where people came into the booth, checked out our stuff, and walked away? Or were they just really going to be wrapped up in the product and they're our story and they're going to purchase product? This is a show that's very different from what we normally do. We are building a consumer booth this time. Normally it's a trade show booth. There's no back on it. There's just a lot more stuff that goes into this to set it up to have a good retail experience in a trade show environment, which is it's kind of tough right now. So we had our warehouse pull a couple weeks ago. Pull all of our product and ship it here to us at the convention center so we wouldn't have to bring it in on the truck and uh, save us a little time, save us a little headache. Well, the company ended up losing it all. Um, UPS blames GES, GES blames UPS, everybody's pointing fingers here and there. It was five pallets. It was 290 boxes of stuff. We're less than 24 hours before kickoff of this of this thing, man, and we've been planning, we've had the the product pulled from the warehouse. Um, everything was delivered on time. It got here. We had the storm of the century come through, UPS and everything's jacked up. And we have five pallets of product missing. It's missing. I mean, how do, how do you lose five pallets of product? Well, that's where we are. We have uh, tracking that says, yes, it's gonna be there on Tuesday. We have now three days to set up the booth and Tuesday begins to pass. It's okay, we've got a lot of stuff to do in the booth. We're getting it ready. Uh, Wednesday, 100% it's coming in. All right, so it appears that UPS put it on a trailer, trailer 21331198. We're trying to find that trailer and see if our stuff is actually on it. So we'll see what happens. We're about to talk to GES guys. We're checking tracking, that sort of thing. Um, there's a lot of confusion. Somebody says the product's there. Somebody says they haven't received it can't find it another day goes by so now we're completely buttoned up everybody's you know hurry up and wait let's sit around and, and you know, the whole team's in town now with nothing to do comedy of errors it's been in, in the yard the whole time uh, just in a trailer sitting away in storage I'm sure we're paying storage fees on it and all that mess that goes along with trade shows uh, but about one o'clock on Thursday the cavalry arrived five pallets of gear come in we have this 10 by 40 booth. They find it finally, like the day before we go live. And we get it, and they pull it up outside of our booth, and it's just like five mountains. And we're like, oh my gosh, now we gotta sit here and put it all together, basically load our inventory into our booth, stage it, and get it ready. If I ever see another box, corrugated box, it'll be too soon. I am so tired. My back is killing me. The fat boy has had enough. My hips are hurting. I need ibuprofen. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to handle it. I got him. I mean, I don't. Corrugated boxes, five pallets, tons, tough. How weather gear getting here. If, if there was a challenge, it was, it was probably in my area. It was probably had something to do with me. Did I worry about it? Absolutely. But did I pass my worries on? Absolutely. Were my worries taken care of? Absolutely. Just another day in the life of Hook. Just another day in the life of Maryland Outdoors. It was a massive amount of product to get through. 
identifying everything that we had, figuring out how to sort it, how to put it on the wall to have the most successful retail experience. Uh, and then we did all that in four hours instead of over three days.